Hello everyone, I'm Chris Heiler and this is IBN News. Tonight we're shining the spotlight on child abuse and the scandals behind them. while now, on many different news sources, we have all heard much about the abuse of authority, mistreatment of others, and the fulfillment of a disturbing lust by those who should have been our protectors. With millions and even billions of dollars being spent, it seems the path being taken to address this growing problem is not the answer. When one hears about child molestation today, the name Jerry Zandusky readily comes to mind. With the NCAA stepping in to punish Penn State University for their part in the cover-up concerning the matter, even considering the death penalty for one of our nation's most prestigious and recognizable football programs. In the end, the program, it seems, will be placed on life support, with Penn State grabbing the headlines and emotions running high. As we painstakingly count the numerous victims, it seems that the largest of violators has once again escaped the public eye. Amazing how we, as a society, can so easily have our attention redirected. A year after Penn State's problem became public, we have seen not only the conviction of the perpetrator, but also the removal of three powerful leaders of the Penn State community who looked the other way. The university also commissioned no less than a former FBI director to conduct a thorough and impartial outside investigation. To the contrast, we have an organization who on a vast larger scale has hidden and turned the blind eye to much more than what Penn State was accused of. After all, was not Penn State University supposed to be a place where one could send their children for an education to study under the elite to better themselves for the benefit of all of mankind. Then how much worse is a place where we send our children, making a lifetime commitment to serve and dedicate our innermost being, offering up everything we have to serve, and placing complete trust in the ones who we believe are representatives of our Creator? These so-called leaders of the ultimate moral and ethical code of life. So here's the question. Have we truly failed? Is Jerry Zandusky and the many others as bad as we have portrayed? Or have they just followed the examples that they were given by those whom they trusted and looked up to? And the Catholic Church, what have they done to put an end to the horror? Or could it be more of an embarrassment of some ousting of a secretive practice of this religion? To place the cases under the competence of the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith has been criticized by some as making the process more secretive and lengthening the time required to address the allegations. For example, in his biography of Pope John Paul II, David Yollop asserts that the backlog of referrals to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith for action against sexual abuse of priests is so large that it takes 18 months to merely get a reply. Vatican officials have also expressed concern that the Church's insistence on confidentiality and its treatment of priestly sexual abuse cases was seen as a ban on reporting serious accusations to the civil authorities. Italian academic Lucita Scarafi described the conspiracy involved in hiding the offense as omerta, also known as the Mafia Code of Silence. A 1962 document entitled Instructions of the Holy Office, which is now called the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, codifying procedures to be followed in case of priests or bishops of the Catholic Church accused of having used the sacrament of penance to make sexual advances to penitents, 
as a directive from the Vatican to keep all allegations of sexual abuse secret. Lawyers for some of those making abuse allegations claim that the document demonstrated a systematic conspiracy to conceal such crimes. Produced by a victim of clerical sex abuse for the British Broadcasting Company, also known as the BBC, in 2006, the documentary entitled Sex Crimes in the Vatican includes the claim that all allegations of sex abuse are to be sent to the Vatican rather than the civil authorities, and that a secret church decree would impose the strictest oath of secrecy on the child victim, the priest dealing with the allegation, and any witnesses. Breaking that oath meant instant banishment from the Catholic Church, also known as excommunication. The documentary quoted the 2005 Ferns Report, a cultural of secrecy and fear of scandal that led bishops to place the interest of the Catholic Church ahead of the safety of children. The church was reluctant to hand over to the civil authorities information about the church's own investigation into the charges. In the BBC documentary, Rick Romley, a district attorney who initiated an investigation of the Catholic Diocese of Phoenix, stated that the secrecy, the obstruction that I saw during my investigation was unparalleled in my entire career as a DA. It was so difficult to obtain any information from the church at all. He reported archives of the documents and incriminating evidence pertaining to sex abuse that were kept from the authorities, which under the law could not be subpoenaed. The church fails to acknowledge such a serious problem, but more than that, it's not in a passive but openly obstructive way of not allowing authorities to try to stop the abuse within the church. They fought us every step of the way, he said. Could it be that what most of us see as an unimaginable act, an abomination as some would say, is merely a part of everyday life in the Catholic Church? After all, if this was to occur anywhere else, such as what we have recently seen at Penn State University, well, it seems like society can't hang them quickly enough. Maybe it's time to admit to ourselves that Jerry Zandusky and others like him are merely victims also to what possibly could be the greatest cover-up ever, child abuse within the Catholic Church. There are some who have started to see this for what it truly is. They have started educating everyone so that they can begin to move past the trauma they have unjustly suffered, helping people who have been victims to this way of life so that they can find and have true peace for themselves and their families. Yisrael Hawkins, a teacher and leader of peace, is reaching out to all victims who have suffered needlessly and feel that there is no hope of morality. He and his team are at this time helping all around the world to restore love, care, consideration, and many other essential components that when put together, bring complete peace to everyone's life. Now we're going to place a website up on our screen where you can get in touch with Yisrael Hawkins and his team. And you can visit them by going to www.yisraelhawkins.com. Or you can call 1-800-613-9494. Now that's a toll-free phone number and you can reach them anytime. Remember, if you've suffered from child abuse, it's not your fault. Reach out to those who are trying to put an end to these things today. I would think Israel Hawkins and his team, they're going to make a huge difference. From all of us here at IBN News, thanks for joining us.